I don't know who ordered this white stuff, but uh, we're back in Utah, headed to, okay, I'm gonna tell you, we're headed to Washington to pick up the Thunlins. So I want you to know, this is what I came out of Arizona for, to go get a truck in Washington, which is the weather's probably gonna be worse up there. Oh my gosh, here we go. Okay, so uh, showed you what snow was yesterday. I didn't show you today. Let's let's do this. Let's do a snow thing, shall we? Our first stop at uh, America's Adventure Stop or something like that. First stop. I don't know. Adventure's first stop. Anyway, so obviously, in oh, say hi. Hey. Yep. We got him back. We're headed to uh, Washington to pick up the farmers, and this is what Mother Nature blessed us with this morning. I know that we need the water up here in the West and, and it's great, but I'm, I, I think I'm like everybody else in the world is, I'm tired of this wet. I'm tired of all this crap. <laughs> I, I, we went to Arizona for a reason because we, you know, cause I just wanted to get out of the weather cause I didn't have a job because obviously you can't farm in the winter. So I'm having fun. Yeah. He's having a blast. This is like a winter wonderland. Yeah, I love it. You know, Hawaii doesn't get all this. Well, except it's, I'm really up high on top of the mountains. So it's Christmas at Easter time. It's crazy. All right, so let's get headed north, shall we? Because uh, I think springtime is up north. I think so. I've, yeah. he I've that, heard that. That, yeah. that. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Spring, this topsy -turvy spring world. works its way down, apparently, around here. So we're hoping weather gets better as we head north. So let's do that. So seriously, when I say, you know, we went north to go to spring, this is, I, this is not quite Idaho yet, but we're very close. And there's less snow here than there is in Utah. So springtime's arriving in Idaho, but not in Utah. So I just thought I'd show you the fun we're having. So we uh, took two and a half hours out of our life and went and saw Yankum Ropes. And I am now an affiliate at Yankum Ropes, which was incredible to even have that. But I gotta tell you, we're gonna show you some stuff that will blow your mind Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the stupid one. I don't know. But I learned things just talking to Jolene in the office there. And, oh my gosh, I got so freaking excited. It was crazy. But there's some really cool stuff I want to pass along. So just letting you know that, you know, I learned something today, which learning every day is a good go. Oh, yeah, this is the part I have seen. Thousands and thousands and thousands of strands of this stuff. Oh man, yank him ropes. Oh yeah. You know the drill, right? They all know the drill. It's like some other guy coming in here. Hey man. So all this nylon goes into here. And then we take this and it goes on. Oh, I can't remember the name. And then it winds on the main bobbins. And then the bobbins go to the, bra uh, the core and the jacket machine. So what, so what, okay, because this is a question I had when I was watching Casey do it. You got a two-step process to wind this to wind to, to, to create a whole nother rope to then create the whole other rope. Yeah. So it's like a three-step Three-step process, process. yep. It's actually four-step. Oh, it's oh, a four-step. Four. Yep. Okay. And do you wind, you wind the inner rope also? Yes. Okay, perfect. Because Casey... Casey didn't quite explain all that in his in his show. I'm going to explain it for my viewers so they understand. Yeah. Okay, cool, awesome. So this is step one, step two. Okay, cool, awesome. Which will end up being? Oh, which will be the other rope? There you go. And this is the inner. That's the inner. Okay, that's the rope. Yeah, so that's okay. the jacket. So. Okay, that is the jacket. Wrapped around the rope. Yeah, so that is, is that's it, it. okay. Awesome. So that's the inner core of the seven eighth. The, the seven eighth is not a this is, this is the, every every rope has this core, right? Uh, no, or, or this smaller. One's little, yeah, this one's smaller, and then like the seven eight thirty would be about the same, and then the one inch would be a little bigger. Oh, okay. I think I have a one inch. I'm not sure. I have a yeah. I have a seven eight or a one inch. It's in my truck, but it's buried where I can't figure out what it is. What do you drive? 
I got a board, but I, I've got it for so a. I can do this, right? Yep. Okay, so Jolene has just informed me that these big ropes, and I did not know this, are for. So Jolene, they, they're originally for tugboats. Which is ropes. really cool. Yep. That's, because that's, um, I mean. They, they're from, they, they call them Holland. They're, the company is Holland in Texas. So down. Texas. Down on south, the, down, 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 south. down the yep. coast. Cool, awesome. When you're picking out a rope, you pick it out for the rig that's doing the recovery, not what is stuck. Okay. Because if you pick a rig or a rope that is for a, say, a box fan, and you have Subaru come along, you're not gonna have your kinetic energy because there's not enough weight on that whole vehicle to create that So stretch. the Subaru would not be able to do it even with the best kinetic rope in the world because of the fact you if need the energy big. if it was too big. But if he had, say, a three-quarter inch rope that was made for his weight, he would be able to get that. So you're basing the weight off of the pulling vehicle, not and the not vehicle being pulled. Yeah. So I can't say, but on my, because I haven't announced this yet on my, on my channel, but we've got our, um, how do I put this? Uh, anyway, I have a very small vehicle. <laughs> I need a very small rope if I'm going to use that to pull with, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. How do I rate that? So what? Off of weight. So, but I mean, so when I look at it and I go, okay, so that rope, I got a one inch, I think, mm -hmm. and it's rated at 20. So it's off the top of my head. I don't know the exact weight, but that's from one tons up to like a small tractor, your one inch rope. So I is. made the right choice. For your truck, yes. Inevitably not knowing it was the right yes. choice. So. But it, oh my gosh. So like I, me, I have a Jeep. If I bought a one inch rope, I'm not, it maybe if I had all my Outlander gear on there and- Everything weight wise, you need weight the weight wise, to do it. The weight is what gets your kinetic pull. So my one inch rope behind my Jeep is not gonna do the job. No, nope. you need a seven eighths for a Jeep. Wow. No one, <laughs> I have not seen that anywhere has ever said that. Yep how you weight them or how you base okay that you that is such good information so i need a seven eighths for that how how small does it go because you like your so your... we have we have ropes all the way to four wheelers so we can get oh that's right i saw that yeah Somewhere. we have yeah, yeah. half inch we've got three quarters seven eighths one inch one and a half two and two and a half and i see oh yeah okay and then the length depends on we usually recommend a 30 foot rope for sand snow and mud okay and a 20 if you're doing like mountain recoveries because you don't have because you don't have the room to the get room the to energy get built up yeah. well the the ropes will stretch 30 percent in any rope so okay. usually it comes yeah so even if you had a 20 foot rope or a 30 foot it's still either rope is going to do 30 percent it'll stretch 30%. stretch 30 percent but the further you get out, the You've less. You've got more. But it, but there's isn't there a point where it becomes ineffective? Somebody was saying, and I and I heard this, and I was kind of confused that it would be ineffective at, at, at eighty, like eighty feet, if you're stringing them together. Do you so lose? I've never had, I've never strung two together, so I can't. Can't say. On, on experience, okay. I can't answer okay. that question. But you probably will lose. Some of some no of the energy what, it's only energy gonna, dissipates. Yeah, and then you're only going to be able to stretch 30. Okay. So even if you hook those two, it's not going to be 30 and 30. It's just going to be 30 percent. Oh, it's going to be 30 percent total between the two. Between the two, because you hooked them together. So you actually have them diminished. Yeah. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. I'm like, oh my God, I got ducked. <laughs> so Jolene, Jolene just ducked, ducked my red, my red sled. I call my Jeep the red sled because it's obviously it's it's Santa Claus's sled. Nice. So we call it red sled now. Well, there you go. I like it. I like it. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick look around here. I do have some. I now have stickers. I've got stickers. I'm gonna put stickers on my Jeep and my truck actually, because now we're we're a full-on affiliate, and uh, we're gonna do it. Because anybody who doesn't know about Yankum Ropes, gosh dang, this is freaking amazing. The, the intelligence that I just sucked in and probably will lose in 20 minutes. It's, it's incredible. Because my ADHD, so yeah, my ADHD is running away with me. But oh, I am so fascinated by this whole process. And because we are in Idaho, this is our view. And I'm telling you, springtime has almost sprung in Idaho. We did go over one pass that got really dicey, and it was crazy, crazy, crazy. But we're uh, we're moving along, hoping for much better weather. It is Easter Jeep Safari weekend, so I was lucky to catch Alan in at Yankum Ropes. But what incredible place.
people. What an incredible process. The ropes are just incredible. I, I mean, there's no other word. Would you agree? Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely I, amazing. I, I agree. It was, it, was, yeah. it was crazy. It was crazy. Sorry, I didn't mean to make everybody sick by swinging the camera that fast. <laughs> Well, the, the science behind them is, is just uh, incredible. I, I've never seen, never really thought of the technology that goes into making a rope. I, you know, a rope is a rope. No, there's there's so much science and, and, and knowledge that they have that how these kinetic ropes actually work. And, and we learned a lot how they, uh, how they actually are used and, and how to use them. It, it was it was crazy. I mean, it, it was seriously nuts. So we're gonna put that on. Uh, we're definitely gonna tag them and show them. And uh, we've got a uh, we've got a code for you guys. It'll be in the description. But it is uh, S N K, so it's Sand K. But I will definitely put that in there. Make sure that we get that, so you guys can get a, a little bit of a uh, discount. I think I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work just yet. We're gonna have a talk with them. And we're gonna get it worked out. But hey, check check out what we saw. Man, oh man, oh man, we're in the middle of Idaho, some of the most beautiful country we've been up through. So obviously I didn't film it because, you know, it's a little tricky. This is beautiful country up here. I believe we're in the McCall area. McCall Donnelly, I'm seeing, basically. And I hope that's not a cop. Anyway, Elk Creek Church. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful country, but I gotta tell you, it's way too much snow for me. Way too much snow. day two of our grand adventure to Spokane to get the thumbs. So here we are. We are ready to make the move. Get out to Spokane. Northwest Diesel Works. Pick up a truck. Drag the truck home. Got my cameraman over there, but I'm doing the camera work because he's over there giving you all, all the uh, shaka. So, of course, y'all know Andy from Hawaii. He decided he wanted to be part of the operation to bring to bring the Fummins home. We gotta come up with a name for her, but uh, we'll figure something out. Anybody got any, got any ideas, put it in the comments. What can we name her? I got White Lightning here because he showed up just in time. We got the Red Sled, of course. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the other project we got going because I haven't even introduced it yet, but I'll let you know we got, we got some stuff coming, so, hey. Give me an idea. What do you want to call our, our fummins? What would we call it? Okay, here we go. Of course, I'm a farmer, right? I mean, come on. Look at the green. Washington is greening up very nicely with this. Got a nice stand of wheat planted. Holy cow. I'm assuming it's wheat. Could be rye all I know, but dog, gone it. Look at how green. Oh man, we haven't seen that in Utah forever. Wow. This is a farmer in me coming out right there, boys and girls. We got to thinking, sitting here going, man, there's trees here. We we weren't even thinking. We're in Washington. Looks a lot different than Utah. But yeah, we're going back to the snow again and everything. Snow patches here and there, but it's getting nice. Spring is coming. I believe, honestly, spring is coming. So we are in now in the on Washington Road. We're in Washington on Washington Road. Very good. Okay, cool. Thought we'd show you a little different scenery. So here we are guys, this is the toy, this is the thing, and uh, the guy who put it together, Jake, he hates my guts, <laughs> it's just a little. but, it, but he, he willingly took the job, I did not twist his arm, I did. I, in, in my defense, he agreed to do the thing, but yeah. this is what we ended up with, so walk us through, so we got two batteries. Uh, so we do the dual batteries on this side so that we have room for the airbox over Okay, here. cool, all right. Um, and it's just a little nicer setup, you get the billet battery tray. I like it. Um, Crossover cables. This was all part of the kit from D Stroke. D Stroke, because we um, use a D Stroke kit. Yep. Right. Um, these cables are actually for a second gen Dodge. Okay. Um, so that they're correct and fit everything. Um, this intake elbow comes with the uh, conversion kit, the intercooler tubes. This is a factory six liter intercooler tube okay. uh, that we modified to fit this truck. And then this is another factory six liter tube, obviously, would have went up here. Um, <clears throat> modified it as well, and then just built the little cold air intake kind of deal there. Okay. Um, all the hoses, I mean, that's just kind of a generic hose, but all the other, trying to make everything so that it's stuff, stuff that you can buy uh, at any at part any store. At any part yeah. store, okay. Um, otherwise, I mean, 
AC works, all the gauges work. Sweet. Uh, See, my, and my plan is obviously we got the valve covers and things that are looking like crap, and true. I want to clean some of this up. Yep. So I, I kind of want to make a show truck out of it because I think you, I was pretty certain you did a decent enough job that it should be shown around. I will not, I will not send people your way because this is the last one you're doing, right? The last one. Last one. Yeah. Never going to do this yeah. again. I'm sorry that I'm the, I hate being the last one. I'd better be the first one. Well, I did agree to do a, a Duramax in a uh, 84 Chevy Suburban though. So. Oh, okay. All right. So, so you're, I don't know if I'm, uh, you're not exactly I'm done not yet. Quite done with yeah, it. Yeah, you're not done with it. So, so. Oh, that's cool. Um, otherwise, it's got the third gen manifold to drop the turbo in the back. Okay. Just like they all have to have. Okay. Um, I mean, a guy could switch it around, but it's a lot tighter uh, with the factory Ford airbox here. Uh, we put that 7.3 uh, oh, just freshly overhauled trans in, um, and that shifts really well, drives really well. Uh, I think it's, I think you'll be pretty impressed with it. It runs really well. It, I mean, it fires like a first gen, so you'll, uh, I think you'll be impressed how it starts. And you said at the coldest days it fired up. Oh yeah, pretty decent up here. Yeah, and yeah. it was it was 28 degrees this morning, and like I said, it fires straight up. This and morning. it, I would say, it cranked like three seconds. That ain't bad. And then fire right up. That ain't bad. No grid heater. No, that ain't bad. Yeah, no grid heater on it at all. So, what would it take to put a grid heater on it? Um, I think they make that spacer. It's it would lift things up a little too much. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't. There is an option that you can pull this plug here and put one in the side there. Okay. Um, if it's necessary. If you needed one, um, you know. And but you could, block heater might actually be an easier. Block heater is already there, so that would be way easier. Way easier to do. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, okay, if, yeah. it, unless you're going to drive it in the dead of winter and it's minus 40. I'm you know. not planning on being anywhere near minus 40. So then, yeah, it'll fire right up. Like I say, we've started it at minus 15. This Seriously? Year, yeah, and it fired right up. Spokane gets minus 15? We had a day where it was minus 30 on my way to work. Yeah. Oh, my crap. So fire right up, so I'm good. I don't. That's, right off, yeah. It'll never. I'll never ask any more than that from it. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, I'll uh, I'll reach in and fire it up. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's do it, man. Oh. from high school and he and I go you know I'm getting into this truck so deep you know it's like he goes yeah but he says cool costs money and this is cool it'll look a lot better when I do some clean up on it I, I apologize for bringing it up like that but I picked it up and it was out of the barn basically you know? but it, it's gonna be cool and I will keep you posted I mean you know, I'm sure you'd love to see me win full pieces of jar thing it says door ajar I always thought I have a jar door, a door. I, I always thought doors were doors dude this is too cool he does have an ABS light he told me there was some issues there we'll uh, we'll look and see what we can do okay the power steering pump is a little tight
I love this new dash I got put in. This is so freaking fantastic. Oh yeah, it's a little stiff in the steering, but I, I'm wondering if it's not. I don't know, but I got. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. It's got a turning circle on. Screamer like the six seven, but it's a uh, or six yeah the six seven got power. I can just feel the power. Oh, it's there, man. I like it. Oh yeah. Oh no. Cool costs money, baby. <laughs> this cost a buttload of money. And I'm sorry, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not all that capable. I did have to have somebody do this for me, but I'm gonna take it. This is going to be a nice truck. I'm going to get some good mileage out of this truck. I'm going to do some sprucing up. So the project's not finished. Oh no, we're not even close to finished. We're not, I got so many things. I got dash things I got to fix. I got, I'm, I'm going to put this. I, I truly, at this point in my life, it's going to be a work truck. But I want it to be show quality to where we can take it to little, you know, little shows and stuff and say, hey, look what we've done. It's we've we've had a little fun. We made a truck that not everybody's got. Oh yeah. I oh, know I like it. And I love the rattle. I get, I get so much crap from friends who don't drive diesels. That rattles. I love the rattle. I love the noise. Listen, listen to that thing. Listen to that thing talk. It's just like, here we are, man. I oh, know this is a good, this is a good one. This is a good one. I love that turbo line. Yeah, I'm sick. I know, I'm sick and twisted. Yeah, I love it. I know he hate he hated this project. He told me he'll never do it again. But I tell you what, he did a good job. They're hard to do. I'm I'm just absolutely fascinated at how he's able to uh, modify and fix things to get get that. You know, I mean, he he put that engine in there into that engine bay like with a shoehorn. Oh yeah, it took everything he had to get it done at that run. Let's go down here and turn around and then we'll come back. It's so heavy. The pedal is heavy, which I like because it's got the, it's, it's a, it's not a fly by wire. So for people who don't know, most every new car nowadays is like a, like a sewing machine pedal. You're, you're literally pushing electronics through to a whole new system. This is literally pedal pushing to the actual throttle to the actual make it go fast and i like that because it's a positive feel i love the i love the feel of the other truck but you can't beat that positive feel and knowing that that's pushing right on right on it's, that's an accelerator i like it it's fun yes i know This truck? Yeah. It's a big toy. It is a big toy. It's boys and their toys. And cool is expensive. Oh. Come on back to here. different way of
Watch your back. Oops. That makes so much more sense than the way I did it the first time. I can be taught, people. I can be taught. <laughs> That's not going nowhere. All right, so we did make Easter Jeep Safari. Thought we'd come down and just kind of see the show. See what's going on. See if our friends from Yankum Ropes are here. See if our other friends, the other crew is here. We just kind of see what's going on. So let's go inside, shall we? Cal Mini. Cal Mini. Yes, so we're still here. Got Greg over here. Got all these people. That's it. I have some half doors that go. Looking at some cool stuff, man. Yeah. Way more money than I got right now. We got some fun. Oh, cool. They thought of people like us. Yep. Here we go. So, now we're up full height. We're full height, right? Yep. Okay, full height. Yeah. Ride height. Highway height. That's ride height, right? There's the bottom. That's the bottom. <laughs> So that literally at the bottom, yeah, without 40s on, that would be, that's literally my solution yeah. to my problem because my wife can't get in and out, even with running boards, and I don't want to put anything down low. Yep, there's ride height right there. And ride height right there, so it's about three inches. Yeah, okay. About the equivalent of my two and a half inch kids. Okay, perfect. Yeah. There's the highway mode. That's. I was driving across Oklahoma and Texas. South wind hitting me at 50 mile an hour. That made a difference. It really did. Oh, I'm it sure. It wasn't blowing me all the way. Oh, I'm sure it's. Yeah. I'm 10 times better. I mean, I'd freaking put it on my Ford, my three, F 350 if I could. Dump truck mode. Yeah, oh, show me dump truck mode. I like dump truck mode. No Carolina drag. Just dump truck and get it out of it. You dumped your load. Carolina drag. There we go. So you literally can independently do each bag this is a killer this is a this is a this is a good solution right here i may need to talk to these people about a sponsorship here too <laughs> i'll let you get yours first cool guys